Hold on, right, sir. I just got fucking sentinel. You gotta kill that kid, man. What's going on guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you my updated DLC settings for season 12. If these settings help you out in any way, a sub will be greatly appreciated and let's get right into the video. Alright, hopping in the settings here, our interact problem style is going to be on default, button hints is going to be off, crosshair damage feedback is going to be off, damage numbers is going to be stacking. Stacking is just the easiest to read, so when I'm playing and I want to give a call out to one of my teammates, it's more easy to know how much damage I did when it's on stacking. So going on a ping opacity, I have this on faded. This just makes most of the pings on the HUD faded. For the obituary, you're going to want to have that turned on. For minimap rotation, I have that on off. For weapon auto cycle and empty, I have that on on. That's pretty much preference, but I just like it when it's on. For auto sprint, you're going to want to have that turned on. Double sprint, uh, you definitely want to have this turned off. For jetpack control, if you're in Valkman, you want to have that on hold. For incoming damage feedback, you want to have that on 3D. For taking damage close to death box or crafting menu, you 100% want to have that on off. This is probably one of the most important things in the game. For hop up pop up, you want to have that turned on. For shimmer mode, you want to have this turned off. For anonymous mode, this doesn't even matter. Um, pretty much all this right here is preference. Um, for reticle, I have this on default. And my custom reticle is just on a teal. For color bar mode, I have that on Tridenopia. I just like how it makes the shields look. And then the rest of this you can just copy. We're going to skip past the mouse and keyboard section and go on a controller. For button layout, I play on default. I have one paddle in the back, and that paddle is binded to my jump. It's pretty weird. Most people want to have multiple paddles, but I just like the one paddle on my left hand. It just allows me to focus on using claw a little bit more and eliminates me from having to use A as much. Going on a stick layout, I do play on default. For interact reload button, I have it on tap to use and reload. Using hold to use can be better because then you can reload behind shields. I was just never able to get used to that, so I just use it on tap to use and reload. For crouch button, I have this on toggle. This is really this preference. I prefer toggle. For aim button, I put that on hold. For survival slot button, I have this turned off. For trigger dead zones, I have that on none and then menu cursor spray this is all preference but i do prefer to have it kind of towards the bottom here when i'm going through death boxes i normally just go up and down in the death box so there's no need to really go around and look for loot like that so onto the settings area i have been playing a lot of 404 classic i do use a small dead zone when i do that if you're first starting off with the game i actually do recommend running a 404 or 43 cents it's pretty slow it's really just a good sense all around and most pros in the game run 44 or 43 anyway going on an inverted look i have this turned off Movement dead zones are on small, vibration off, 100% you want to have vibration turned off. Alright, moving on to the ALCs. My dead zone is going to be at 5%, outer threshold at 1, response curve at 7. I do not use proptic settings. And then for yaw speed, I have that at 300, pitch speed at 190, turning XGA at 240, and then the rest of this is turned off. For ADS, my yaw speed is 115, and ADS pitch speed is 91, 90, doesn't really matter. That does that one doesn't really change anything that much, and then the rest of this is going to be turned off. Target compensation, obviously, want to have it turned on. Don't be that guy that thinks he's better because he doesn't have aim assist turned on. For melee target compensation, obviously, want to have that turned on as well. So I've been playing on console for a super long time, but this season I swapped to PC. And so I want to go over my video settings because a lot of people look for video settings and a lot of people don't play on a really beefy computer. This is for if you're on PC, if you're on console, this won't show up. But for my PC video settings, my display mode is going to be on full screen. Aspect ratio is 16 by 9 native. My resolution is going to be at 1920 by 1080. I do not have a 1440p monitor, so this is, is this is the highest resolution I can get. I don't like playing stretch res as well because it kind of just gives me a headache, and I prefer how native looks more. For brightness, I have this on 80%. I think brightness is really important in this game. There's a lot of dark areas. Having a brightness really high will allow you to see pretty much everything. For field of view, I have this on 106. A lot of people like 1010, but 106 for me just feels a little bit better. For FOV ability scaling, you can, I have this enabled, but this is pretty much preference. This just changes your FOV depending on certain abilities like Octane Stim. For Sprint View Shake, I have this on minimal. Definitely want to have this on minimal. Normal just messes up your aim. Alright, so going on to the advanced video settings. These are just for my PC. I have a 3070 with an i7, so I have a pretty nice computer. And if you're running on a lower graphics card, you might want to put more of these settings towards the lower side, and I'll tell you which ones you can. For VSync, I have this disabled. For NVIDIA Reflex, you want to have this on Enable Plus Boost if you're able to. For Adaptive Resolution FPS Target, I have this on zero. For Anti-Aliasing, I have this on none. For my texture streaming budget, it's on low. Um, for texture filtering, I have this on um, 16x. For ambient occlusion quality, I have this on high. This also doesn't really matter. You can have this as low as you want, depending on your computer specs. For sun shadow coverage, I have this on low. Sun shadow detail, I have this on low. 
spot shadow detail, I have this disabled, volumetric lighting disabled, dynamic spot shadows disabled. For model detail, I have this high, and effects detail I have this high. This once again doesn't really matter. It's not going to hinder performance if you have your models turned down, and this will reduce your GPU load. For impact marks, I have this disabled, and then ragdolls I have on low. Anyways, that about wraps the settings. If I was able to help you guys out in this video, if so, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm thinking about streaming here on YouTube soon, but for the time being, I do stream on Twitch. So if you'd like to watch me play live, there's a link to that in the description.